Hello, this is Gary at Jack Raven Brushcraft. Thank you for watching our video. Uh, this week I'm going to talk about sighting your shelter. Where I'm saying shelter here, it could be that we're referring to a tent, it could be a tarp, it could be a debris shelter. Uh, the, these general principles, these general considerations are going to be the same um, however you are choosing to spend your night in the woods. The things I'm about to discuss are not in any particular order, they are just as they come to me by and large. So yeah, there, there is no order of priority or urgency um, associated with these um, these various considerations. When you're looking for somewhere to site your shelter, then you're probably going to be thinking about the availability of resources. So if you are building a, a lean-to shelter, so an A-frame, a, 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 um, a lean-to, that kind of thing, then um, obviously you're going to need the materials to construct your shelter. If you are under a tarp or you're in a tent, then maybe not quite that same volume of resource, but nonetheless, you are still going to be looking around to make sure that you have enough wood for firewood, for instance. Is there any water nearby? Are there any um, plants that we might be able to make use of in terms of foraging? Uh, do we have green wood if we're going to be making pot hangers or cranes to, to help us with our cooking? Um, uh, so those kinds of things. So do we have those general resources in the vicinity? Wind direction is going to be important. So this is um, not so much where you site your shelter, but how you position your shelter, for example. So if we were in a tent, then you probably want it so that the wind is going to hit the back of the tent and then kind of blow across the top of it. If you're in a, an A-frame debris shelter, you're probably going to want the same kind of thing going on. If you're in a tarp, then uh, for me, my preference would always be to have the wind hitting the side of the tarp rather than kind of blowing down through it. So wind direction is always going to be important. Kind of tying into wind direction is going to be around the uh, availability of suitable trees. So we want to be sighting our shelter um, near trees that are uh, robust, that are unlikely to fall on us in the night. Now, certainly I'm not an arborist, um, and it may well be the case that you're not either. So when it comes to inspecting the trees, there is only kind of so much we can um, do. So take a look and see if there are any obvious cracks or splits in the in the trunk of that tree are there any obvious signs of decay so can you see any any rot are there any mushrooms um, growing out of the tree um, on top of that just give it a bit of a shake and and check that it is indeed um, robust and, and unlikely to fall down similarly you're going to want to look upwards into the canopy so you're looking for standing dead wood and hanging dead wood so standing deadwood branches that have um, died away but they're still attached to the tree. Um, hanging deadwood branches, twigs, etc. that are no longer attached to anything. They're just kind of hanging up there. So I would be wary of both of those categories, hanging wood and hanging dead and standing dead. It's also the case that there are, especially this is more if we're thinking around debris shelters or tarps, there are some trees that have bark that is more easily damaged than other species. So, for instance, things like Western Red Se Western, beg your pardon, things like Western Red Cedar and Elder. So, I would always be particularly cautious about sort of either leaning up um, for a lean-to shelter, leaning up that that sort of um, horizontal ridge pole against it. I'd also be cautious about wrapping. Um, paracord or so on around some of those species where the bark can be potentially damaged um, easily. 
On the issue of um, damage, of course, as bushcrafters, should, we should be doing everything we can to ensure that we um, adhere to our leave no trace rule. And for me, that very much incorporates uh, not uh, causing any unnecessary damage to the um, trees and plants and, and indeed the wildlife that we share the woodland with. So I would always try to site my shelter in such a way as um, in a way that means I don't have to trample lots of ground flora, for example. So, of course, there are some species that are protected under Schedule 8 of the Countryside and Wildlife Act. So, so there we absolutely must not disturb them. But just as a general rule, I would always try to avoid um, trampling down um, flora on the ground. I would also always try to site my shelter in such a way as um, I didn't need to start cutting branches off trees. Um, you know, you, you kind of think, oh, that branch is a little bit in the way. Well, just look for somewhere else to put up your shelter uh, rather than having to cut down those, those branches. I would always take a quick look around as well to make sure there are no um, insects that I'm likely to disturb. So where, where we're based in an ancient broadleaf woodland, we don't have an awful lot of um, wood ant activity. Uh, although I have camped in other places where that, that, is, uh, that, that wood ant activity is much um, greater. But it's not just wood ants that you might want to, to look out for. Um, a few years ago, in fact, we were camping to the other side of the valley on one of our courses. Um, Ho Kyung, one of our instructors, turned up a, a, a little lady got stuck in the traffic uh, and so was consequently putting up his tarp and hammock in um, pretty much dark conditions. And it was about 30 yards, 30 meters or so from the rest of us. And we heard some um, profuse swearing in the distance and it turned out that Ho Kyung had uh, or he had partially set in his tarp and hammock up above a wasp nest and the wasps were not happy about it whatsoever. So just check out that animal activity um, kind of thing there to, to make sure that there are no um, ants and, or bees or wasps or any of those things that you might well end up disturbing. There are other animals that we need to be thinking about as well. So for instance, there are um, various protected species, bats being a, an obvious example of that. So again, we need to take a, a quick uh, inspection to ensure that we're not going to be disturbing any bats. I would also think or have a little look around to, to ensure that I'm not setting up my shelter um, directly on an animal trail. Some species are, are stubborn, um, will follow their trail uh, regardless of whether or not you have actually um, put something in their way. We want to try to avoid areas that are liable to flood. Uh, sometimes that might be re relatively obvious. We might be able to do that from um, water indicating tree species, water indicating plant species that are giving us a good clue that the, the um, water table isn't far below the surface. It might be that we can see little troughs running along the ground where where there may be, you know, if there's a rain, that, that it could fill up. Um, we have a, a little stream running through the centre of our shelter. Also related to the weather, we have, the, we have cold spots or cold traps. So hot air rises. The opposite to that, of course, is that the cold air sinks. And so sometimes that dip um, may be a few degrees cooler than the, the slightly higher ground around it. Um, of course, that dip might also be more liable to, um, to flood. There are many factors that we need to be thinking about here. Uh, and of course, we can't take those factors in isolation. We need to think about them um, as a, a collective. And so sometimes we're going to be looking for the trees that are the right distance apart but they're also oriented in the right direction uh, and so for the wind and they've got no standing deadwood up there and there's no ground floor that we might trample and there are no animal trails there are no insect activities so we need to, to kind of look at this holistically i hope that is uh useful to you something that will uh you will be able to carry on your own bushcraft adventures 
I will endeavour to get some more content out next week. Uh, make sure you don't miss out on that. You can subscribe either to our YouTube channel or our blog, both of which are Jack Raven Bushcraft. In the meantime, take care. <laughs>